You're muted, sir. You're muted, sir. Okay, uh, apologies for the delay, ladies and gentlemen. So I would like to introduce myself first. I am Sir Mark M. Manabat, your moderator for today's free webinar session here at Asia Pacific Association of Educators Training Institute. With me are my, are, uh, my uh, team. We have uh, Sir Oliver and uh, Sir Fern. And of course, later I will be introducing to you our uh, well-renowned and, of course, very effective speaker. At this point in time, that without any further ado, let me present to you, my dear co-teachers, our house rules for this afternoon. So, of course, let us not forget the first one. You have to be polite. And, of course, you have to keep your microphones muted. Most especially, we have observed, the, we have observed this in our previous seminars that we have been hearing po uh, unavoided noise from, from some of our participants. So we are hoping that to avoid uh, the, the, what we call this, the, the noise during, if somebody is speaking, please make, your, make sure that you're all muted. So number two, please turn your cameras off or use, of course, preferably, we are encouraging you to use our background. As you see on my background, your background if you are in a distracting space. The third, of course, participants are encouraged to rename themselves as follows. You have, of course, the city, of course, your last name, and then, of course, your first name so that we could easily identify and determine where you're from. And, of course, number four, later at the end of the session, we, were, we will be asking you to type in your questions on our, on our chat box, of course, your queries and your questions so that we could ad easily address your concerns through our a question and answer later. Okay. Fifth one, you should do. Uh, should you want to use your microphone, please wait your uh for your name to be called by yours truly. Once once called, please uh present first your name, your affiliation, and your name, and then of course your concern or your question. And of course number six, by joining the event, you agree to participate in a webinar that you, that will also be live streamed in Apayari YouTube channel. Okay, so you could actually view us also in our YouTube channel today at this point in time. And of course, number seven, an evaluation link. This is also important for us, for us, our facilitators. An evaluation link will be posted or shared at the end of the webinar via Aperi's uh, Facebook page and YouTube channel so that we could uh, identify what are the things that we need to improve and at the same time, what are the, th that, the things that you appreciate for, from us. All right. And to move forward, may I ask, of course, uh, one of my teammates to lead us in our opening prayer to be led by Sir Fern Pili. Let us pray. Almighty God, champion of our lives, we come to you today in gratitude for the strength you give us to face the difficulties and uncertainties of these troubling times. You have given us grace upon grace to help us persevere even though we ourselves are suffering and have experienced loss in one way or another. We come to you today to offer you all our efforts. Bless them, Lord, that we may continue your mission and that we may show your love to those counting on us for strength okay. and courage, be it our students, colleagues, friends, and family. In our celebration of gratitude, we humbly beg you to open our eyes and hearts to help us deeply experience the appreciation others have for us. Let this be a soothing balm that will restore us to face the future. We thank you for the gift of leaders and teammates who support, whose support has made the burden of work, whether physical or online, so much lighter. 
we recognize as well the many unsung champions of our lives, people who quietly work to provide for us and assist us in our daily tasks. May we never fail to show them our gratefulness. Bless them, Lord, as we all await the end of this pandemic. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sir Fern, for that very heartful prayer for each and every one. And of course, we would like to we would like to announce once again that we are live via YouTube. So for us to have a smooth flow of our program, please do prepare your concerns and please may we ask everyone to have your all ears on us. Okay, most especially to our speakers and to the people who will be a part of this program. And of course, for us to really uh, listen to this very empowering woman and to give her welcoming message to us. She is actually our president and CEO of Asia Pacific Association of Teach Educators Training Institute or APAYERI. And she is none other than my idol, Dr. Raquel B. Bernabe. Hello, Fado. Hello. Thank you very much for your uh, introduction, Sir Mark. Hello, po. Hello. Can you Hello, still po. hear me? Okay. Yes. So, yes, uh, welcome to all participants of this sixth session of APA ET Pre Webinar. So, just sit, relax, and uh, learn new uh, learning practices and, of course, uh, best practices of our uh, APA ET member affiliates. And congratulations also for Team 6 for, this, uh, for your, uh, for your uh, initiatives in this kind of uh, session. So um, let us uh, all, uh, actually I'm excited to hear uh, something about our brilliant speaker for today, Mam Aileen Ikoy. So, Without further ado, let's start our pre-webinar session six. Back to you, Sir Mark. Thank you so much, Doc Kel, for that very empowering message to all of us. And of course, uh, sana hindi po kayo manawa sa, aming, sa, sa pag-suporta niyo sa aming lahat. And, thank, and uh, without any further ado, let me actually present to you our resource person for this historical and unforgettable session six she's actually or she had actually distinct was actually distinguished in career as a science teacher a lecturer and writer she has been a science educator for 24 years and is currently teaching in savior school san juan city metro manila in 2005 to 2009 she was a curriculum writer in physics education department and a lecturer in physics at Haramaya University in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia, East Africa. A recipient of Outstanding Educator and Empowered Woman of the Year Award. She graduated with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Physics for teachers in Philippine Normal University. She has a degree in Master of Education, major in Educational Management in Greenville College, and is now a candidate for doctoral of educational management. Indeed, she is a DOST for Ed Department of Science and Technology Scholar. She was born in San Mateo Rizal. Hence, according to her, she is a true-blooded resident of San Mateo. Outside her busy professional life, she is a loving wife and a mother of three. And she believes that the more you learn, the more you see things clearly. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with a great pride to present and introduce to you our wonderful resource speaker for, for this session. We have Miss Irene M. Ikoy. Let's give her a virtual round of applause. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello Welcome. there. Good afternoon, spectacular Saturday to all the 34 participants in the Zoom room right now. I hope you are all doing great today. Thank you, Mr. Manabat, for your very warm introduction. 
the title of my talk today is Reframing Student Engagement in the Online Distance Learning. Validate, Challenge, Explore. This is actually anchored on some learning principles and classroom management practices in the context of the online distance learning. Let's begin with this one. Mr. Manabat, please share the screen there. All right, thank you, Mr. Manabat. Please identify which part or parts do you think can influence learning? And please share the letter or letters of your answers using the chat box. Okay, I can now see some answers appearing on the chat box. Okay, thank you for those who have typed in their answers. Some of your ideas may be different from my ideas because we are in the not in the same context, not in the same setup, but it should be fine. Because in diversity, that's how we get to learn more, right? So among these body parts, some of you might have chosen the mind, the mind which processes the learning neurons in our brain. The heart, the heart is what enables our, uh, what enables our student rather to discern what from what is wrong. Of course, we have the stomach, right? The stomach, when it's empty, when our students are hungry, they cannot think well. The feet, okay? The feet symbolize how they walk towards the path of learning. Thus, every part of our body is involved in the learning process. And there's a term such as neutral plasticity. Have you heard of that term? Based on the kind of activities we let our students do, they might end up learning better. Neuron is something biological, okay? Something that, you know, is present no, in our body. In pedagogy, what we incorporate in our teaching is this. Students learn better if we try to make them use multiple parts of their body using different senses. Might end up learning better. And why is it that when we were young, why is it that when we were young, when we were young students, our teachers then, at the start or during class, we were asked to sit still or sit properly. And when I became a teacher, that's also what I asked my students in class, to be still, thinking that if they sit still, they will learn better. But this principle is saying something else. Next slide, please. Okay, there is a need for us to make our students move, to move more using their senses so that they can learn better, isn't it? There is a word, next slide please. Okay. There is a word, please proceed to slide number nine. Okay, there you go. There is a word that you're seeing now on your screen. Can you tell me what is it for? Mm -hmm. You may use the chat box. Just tell me what you know about the word that you are seeing. So you're seeing the word neuron, right? As a science teacher, I know that neurons are responsible for receiving information from the non-science majors, maybe you know something else no, about neuron. What do you know about neurons? Neuron is a part of the brain, the nervous system. Neurons send signal or stimulus to our brain. From your responses, okay, some responses in the chat box, I'm seeing that I think not only the science teachers are familiar with what a neuron is. We all know a uh, neuron Okay, um, something that guides okay, our students in thinking, 
we all know the base information about it. I think that's something that we need to consider in teaching. Given that we are guiding our students to learn, we must know what allows learning to take place. So we have two questions here. Next slide, please. Are neurons tightly linked or loosely connected? How is this linked to another neuron? Neurons are loosely linked. They have gaps, okay? And the gaps are called synapses. What I'm trying to say here is that the gaps between neurons would offer flexibility because if they are so tightly linked, right. it would be difficult for them to adjust to different experiences. But because they are barely touching each other, that allows now a room for flexibility. Okay, next slide, please. Next. There, those are the gaps or the synapse. There, okay? And that's the basis of this concept, the so-called growth mindset. This is a theory that states that we are all capable of learning, learning something new, that there's always a room for improvement. One of my experiences regarding growth mindset would be the pandemic. Just like you, I shifted to online learning last school year because of the current situation that we are in. I remember the very first day that we had to go online, the meet and greet with the parents and the students. It was such a stressful time of preparation that involved familiarizing myself with the Zoom platform and its features, preparing activities for the parents, okay? And to be or to appear to be in control of the situation where, in fact, it was totally new for me, for every teacher in our school, for that matter. So here I am, I uh, thinking how I am going to do this since I haven't conducted a meeting with the parents in an online setup. But instead of saying that it will not work for me, I choose to rise above the situation. So you're seeing now a picture, okay, next slide please, a picture of my first meet and greet with the students, okay, I took this, okay, from one of the documentation pictures. The outcome may not be the best as how I envisioned it to be, but at least I guess I learned from the experience and, I, and thinking that eventually I'll be able to thrive in the online setup with my students. I did not think of it as highlighting uh, what I did not know. Instead, I look at it as something telling me what I still can do. And that allows us to have that experience of growth. That we will learn this eventually. The growth mindset that I may not know it now, but I can learn it eventually. Okay, so for this afternoon, next slide, please. What we'll try to do is to learn how we learn. Hopefully, in knowing that, we will be able to guide our students in a better experience in terms of learning what they have to learn. In this session, we are going to do three things. Next slide, please. The first one is to validate. How do we incorporate these principles of learning in our class? We will also try to answer in what ways can we be more intentional in observing these learning principles? We will also try to explore in what ways can we broaden our usage of these learning principles. These are the three things that hopefully we will be able to accomplish at the end of this session. I hope that at this point, you will allow yourself to be in a space that you will create because if we create a space for what we can learn, then there is something that we'll be able to get from this session. All right. Next slide, please. What we realized when we shifted in an online setup is that we cannot replicate all the things that we used to do. The new setup demands a different approach. And so when I was thinking, what can I bring to my online class? I considered what Marie Kondo suggested, that we choose something that can bring joy to what we are doing because we don't do that or because if we don't do that, this difficult situation will become even harder for us. Next slide, please. And next. And next. Okay, there you go. Next, 
So we have to focus on what is essential. What would matter to our learner? The situation may be different between you and I. In our school, we are capable of choosing what can be given to our students. In your case, perhaps, there's a higher up that demands you to tackle everything there. There's a tendency that you might say, I have no choice because there are the ones or these are the ones that are required of me by my superior. But what we can possibly do is to choose from our set of tasks, something that can be delivered in a way that you will still have fun with your students, something that will spark joy among your learners. Please move three more slides. There. The truth of the matter is that learning has changed, but the principles of learning continue to remain the same. So the things that we have learned in the past when we were studying, those things are still here, are still reverberating in this online setup. As a framework of our discussion, we will identify a learning principle, describe how it can be used, and suggest app or tool that promotes that principle. So the power is in your hands. Which one you'd like to take, which one you'd like to adopt right away, and which one you'd like to part in the meantime. Just let it be there, right? And use it later. But hopefully, you get something out of it, okay? So let's do this simple task. True or false? Okay, move to the next slide, please. Next. Go ahead. Yeah, all right. We will identify, okay, which statement is true or false. You'll be seeing statements related to different learning principles. These statements will be shown one at a time. And using the chat box, dear participants, please type true if you think that the statement is correct and false if it's incorrect. Are you ready? Now let's start number one. The brain or mind is social. Go ahead and type your answer. Thank you. I now see a response. All right. Most of you answered true. Next slide, please. This statement is true. It's a fact. What is then the implication of this principle? That learners will be better in learning if they are able to interact with people. Paul, because what we know can be improved when we talk to other people about what we know, right? And that's where the social construction, next slide please, social construction of knowledge is found, right? With this setup, it's difficult to do that. With our online setup, let's face it, we are in the comforts of our house. Our connectivity might be different from one person to another, and it seems difficult to establish that connection. So what can we do so that our learners can learn better in terms of their social needs? Some of the things that we explored okay, is like this specific task okay, that we uh, allow our students to work together. Of course, you are already doing this, right? Having group tasks in your class or in your classes. But in an online setup, where and how can you do that? You can decide which ones will work for you and which ones would you like to explore further. For example, next slide, please. Okay. For example, using Google Slides. Huh? You may assign students to work together in putting something in the Google Slides or Google Docs where three to four students editing work together at the same time. Give students the chance to say what they know without the teacher saying outright if it's right or wrong. These are some of the things that we do in class. For example, create, next slide please, create a web concept about energy. No? And several students will accomplish the task. That's a sample work of our students. You can also assign one person to answer a particular question, but all these questions are linked together or linked in one way or another. 
In that way, they're helping each other understand the concept. We also use Linuit or Padlet. These are free apps okay, that you may want to use. This is like a virtual bulletin, bulletin board. Next slide, please. Where they can put their ideas. Okay? And students can read the ideas of others. Okay? Another thing that we can do is to share a video with our students. Next, please. Then I ask a question for my students to answer after watching the video, just like this one. Then the students will be asked to comment to one to two answers of their classmates so that they get the feeling that somebody is reading their work or that they are being listened to and that they are getting that feeling that they are connected with someone by commenting on someone else's answer. So these are the things that we do to support the theory that the brain is a social being and that our learners have uh, social needs in terms of connecting with others. Let's move on to the next one. Number two. Yes, next please. Number two, different experiences, same memory making process. With this one, okay, what do you think? Is it true or false? Type your answers in the chat box. Okay, thank you so much. With this one, I think it can go in any way. So there's a mix, okay, answers in the chat box. It can go in any way. It can be true, it can be false, depending on the information that we have. The fact about this theory is that there are at least two approaches to memory. One of these approaches is known as dynamic memory. There. Dynamic memory is the reason why you still remember the food that you have eaten this lunch, if you did eat. It is also the reason why you still remember the time when you did not feel good about what you heard. It's also the same memory that you use when you remember a joyous event in your life. Education experts are saying that when we immerse our students in experiences that engage multiple ways to remember, they will learn better. So if we want our students to remember more what we are trying to teach, we could explore different ways in terms of how they'll be able to interact with the content. We can ask them, next slide please, to take a picture using their camera, okay, using the camera of their gadget. If you are a language or English teacher, you can ask them to use the picture to write a poem. For science, you can ask them to identify the different states of matter that they can see in that picture. For math, you can ask them to identify the different angles seen in that picture. Acute, right, obtuse, straight, reflex angles in the picture. For science, again, look for myths. What are myths? These are false beliefs or ideas or science misconceptions around them. And they will be asked to design an experiment okay, to bust the myth. We call this activity Myth Buster, which is inspired by a science television program. And students are eventually more engaged, more fun for them, and makes them more involved in the learning process. Let's have another example. There you go. You see, okay, this image. Using the chat box, type your answer to the question. This is interesting. Is the lady spinning right to left or left to right? Go. You may use RL, right to left, or LR, left to right. What do you think? Look at the image. Focus your attention on the image. Okay, I saw already an answer. RL, to some it may also be RL, to another LR. As so now we have different answers coming from the audience. If you answered RL or LR, do you think you are right and the others are wrong? Actually, here's the thing. You can control how you want to look at it when you try to concentrate. Try this. Imagine moving it right to left. It moves that way. Imagine moving it left to right. And it can move that way. Try it. Concentrate. Focus your attention. You can control it, right? 
So the movement of this spinning image can be manipulated. It can move right to left or left to right depending on your power of focus. So sometimes we need to know where they are coming from, our students, when they respond to something. Let's not immediately assume that they just don't know it. It may be that there are times that they don't know it really. There are times also that I don't know it. For example, I did not know about how to use Canva in creating posters or certificates last week. So I have to learn it by myself. But then we need to help our learners to go where they need to be without telling them that because they did not know it. They are wrong. When we say something is wrong, sometimes that could diminish their confidence. Other things that we can do to tap on different senses of our students, for example, next slide please, we can ask, ask them to explain how light behaves in this picture taken by them. It can be light is reflected. Next slide. If, yeah, that one. It can be light is reflected or light is transmitted. And then they can come up with their own caption. Okay. So let's go to slides one, two. There you go. You see here other examples with explanations that our students came up with. You can even ask your students to send their favorite songs. Next slide. And then play them next slide before the start of the session this is an example these can be used as a lesson for vibration sounds what are the different sounds that you can perceive from these songs these are song selection of our students chosen by them chosen by their classmates it can also be about valuing why did you choose this song how does the song communicate with you in here, because you are using what they are listening to, they might feel more engaged. And I know you can think of many ways in terms of how you can engage your students better. Let's go to the third one. Every person seeks meaning. Is this true or false? Please send your answers in the chat box. The answer I saw is true. True. Okay, more true because it's a fact. Next slide. The answer is true because the search for meaning is innate. Our brain will refuse to accept something that's, that does not make sense. That we tend to seek for the answer to the questions, who am I? What am I or why am I here? Next slide. If your students start to ask Okay, if your students start to ask why they are in your class and they're unable to see the connection of its importance to their lives, guess what will happen? Sometimes we just assume that our learners should know what they have to learn. What we could do is to make them realize the importance of what we are trying to tell or teach them. They have the capacity to decide which is more meaningful to them or not. You can share why it matters to you, why it matters to someone. Give them options because students learn better when their interests, next slide, and their ideas are engaged and honored. Some of the things that we do to ask them to monitor, okay? For example, monitor the food that they are eating. Is it healthy? Do they eat the right amount of food? You can ask them to use Photoshop to edit something. And then in the form of a game, you can ask the class, which one is Photoshop? Okay? Which one is not? And you can dive into different lessons already with the hook questions okay, as a springboard. Okay? You can also use pet simulation as a science teacher teaching concepts in physics. I use this most of the time, pet simulation. It's also a free app to discuss different concepts in physics. Here are some of the specific examples, okay? Go to the next. In nutrition, in teaching science about nutrition, students will incorporate food available in their locality, in their nutrition plan. But it has to be within their context. If you think that it does not apply to their context, then move on. Okay, another one is the use of Mythbuster. Okay, it's, it's actually a more complex task, that one. 
it can target multiple learning principles. For example, you can ask your students to think of a science myth that they can bust. Okay, like for example, do all plants need light to grow? Uh, can the sun really cook food? No, is yawning contagious? Can you separate two books, for example, whose pages are interleaved using human power? For the FET simulation, this is what I ask our, my students to do. Design, for example, next please, a circuitry, an electric circuit that will power up a motorized toy that they will create on their own. A motorized toy car or a motorized toy boat. Another one, next, is to propose a lab renovation plan. A lab renovation in their own school. Or maybe it can also be creating a plan for their own house or their own room if they have any. Let's say they have the means and there are no restrictions. How will they propose a floor plan of their house using their knowledge of measurement? Then when we allow them to do this in a way they feel that it is important and will really benefit them. Let's go to the fourth one. Next, number four, emotional connection is as important as content connection. Is it true or false? What do you think? What's your answer? I see a true. And the fact is, let's go to the next slide. Thank you for those who participated. The fact about this learning theory in the next slide, please, is that emotions are critical to learning. What experts are trying to say on this is that emotions color meaning. When we are able to draw certain levels of emotions about what we teach our students, it will allow the lesson to reverberate longer and more lasting retention. When our teachers back then, for example, uh, when our teachers back then were frustrated, when we didn't do our assignments in class, we still remember their facial expressions, the words they used when they were uh, scolding us for our irresponsibility. And more likely, we focus our attention to what she was um more likely, we focus our attention to what she was discussing after she got angry at us. We remember what she or he made us feel. I may not remember what my teacher has taught me, but I remember what she made me feel. The feeling of awkwardness, shame, regret, and these are not positive feelings. When the class was being scolded because half of us didn't do our assignment. With this one, we can look for videos. Next, please. That can be interesting in terms of explaining what you want your students to learn. That draws emotion, right? You can look for inspirational quote or picture taken from Goalcast or use your own picture describing something, right? And, you know, uh, this picture can paint a thousand words, can also draw emotion different emotions okay, from our students because sometimes people can change emotion depending on the emotion of someone describing it or describing something and because we are teachers we have the privilege of influencing the emotional state of our learners so look for something that has a powerful message with a powerful imagery that can draw out emotions from your students because if there's emotion, there would be color. And colors can add into understanding something. Let's go to the fifth one. Learning is both conscious and unconscious. True or false? Please send in your answers in if you think this is true or false. There, okay? I now see your answer. Conscious, what does it mean? We are aware of the learning we attain. On the other hand, there are unconscious ways by which we learn. We get to pick, for example, the values of our parents without them directly teaching us those values because we keep on seeing them and unconsciously it gets embedded in us. There is this concept, concept called unconscious incubation. This one states that for students to learn something 
what they learn consciously must be given some time for unconscious incubation. Furthermore, when our learners are given some time to reflect upon what they have learned and to process the experience, they will end up understanding things better. So that's why probably before we begin or we, before we give them a test or a test, we can ask them to write a blog or a simple a reflection paper as a way to reflect on their experience. You can ask them to write a blog if you haven't done it yet, a blog or a vlog, or you can just give a question that will allow them to dive into reflection. Like, what do you want to achieve this year in science? How will you do it? Why is it important to practice safety in performing experiments? After doing the task and activities for this session, give one insight about the topic and one question that you still have. And we do this before a major assessment so that students will know where they are at. Okay, where they are at this point in terms of learning content. And now we're down to the last one. Kindly key in true or false in the chat box for this statement. I see a false, true, true. Okay, thank you very much. Threats and challenges have the same effect on learning. Perhaps you have similar experience before that. Okay, when our teachers gave us a threat, when we ended up doing what they want us to do and studying what we need to study, there, there were teachers who present something and it would appear difficult at first to us but in the process we find it manageable and worth doing and we were challenged so this one is saying do threats and challenges have the same effect on our students according to experts learning is enhanced by challenge and inhibited by threat so let us unpack this one they are saying that in our class, what we could do is to create that relaxed awareness. The students will feel challenged, but they won't feel helpless. When we give threats to our students, they end up feeling helpless. And when they feel helpless, they end up not learning. What is being suggested is that they know it's important and therefore they will be willing to struggle, to sacrifice. Because when our students are supported and they are empowered and the environment is challenging enough for them to learn more, they end up becoming a better student. In what way can we offer that support with our students? Number one, next please building their confidence give them tasks that they can accomplish easily and then we increase the degree of difficulty of the tasks number two it's also important that we build respect some people might think that they deserve respect right but one thing that we have to assume is that everybody must be respected and if your students feel that you respect them they might be encouraged to show the same respect. Maybe we should give it first before we ask it from them. Next, please. A teacher's purpose is not to create students in their own image, but to develop students who can create their own image. Hopefully, we want them to be better than us because if they become better than us, then we are doing our job well. And then finally, let's try to establish connection with our learners. It is said that students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. If they know that they matter to you, they will listen more to you. And with that, you have the power to lead them where they should be. Baka mas kailangan muna natin alamin na saan sila ngayon, sino ang mga kasama nila, maganda ba ang pakiramdam nila, kumain na ba sila, nakatulog ba sila ng maayos. Okay. 
So these are some of the learning principles that we can apply in the online distance learning setup. I know some of the things that I suggested may not work for you, but if you just focus on the principles, next please. You, with your creativity, would be able to think of how these principles can be applied to your own class. So I leave you with these six learning principles that I hope okay, you gained something out of my sharing. These are my personal experiences during the pandemic. Okay, our resilience as teachers has been tested in so many ways. But let us not okay, um, allow this to hinder us from achieving our goal. And that goal is to make our students learn better despite the limitations, despite the obstacles that we are facing right now. And so this is the end of my talk. And thank you very much for listening to me. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Let us give a round of applause, a virtual round of applause to our uh, very effective and very wonderful resource speaker, Ma'am Irene Ikoy. Palapakam po natin siya. Thank you for this very meaningful and relevant topic, Ma'am Irene. And I do hope that all of our teachers have uh, discovered a lot in mind, things that they could actually apply in their own uh, classroom and their own students uh, para medyo bago-bago naman ng konti yung ating ginagawa. Napakaganda nun. And of course, uh, we would like to open now our floor to our questions, our queries regarding our topic. And of course, we have uh, still our resource speaker to uh, answer our questions. You may actually type in all your questions to our chat box. Go ahead, Bo. Do you have uh, sort of questions regarding the report? So, so Ma'am Irene, according to our uh, respondents and participants, uh, they are expressing their gratitude to your topic. Thank you so much from Ma'am Bernadette Camba of Pangasinan. From uh, Sanji Tayaan, thank you. It's very inspiring po. Thank you po, Ma'am Irene. Ayan. If you have questions po, ayan, so they are expressing, Ma'am Bernadette Seminiano is expressing her congratulations to you, Ma'am. But other than that, we would like to hear questions from you guys, from regarding the topic of ma'am. Actually, ma'am Irene, uh, is, uh, I didn't expect ma'am Irene that you've really had this despite our, 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 what do you call this? Being, uh, the, the, the roots, having these roots on education. You are very updated with these kinds of approaches and strategies. I was so, mas advanced ka sa akin, ma. mas, mas medyo may bata-bata ako, pero ang dami mong alam na, na mga pwedeng platform. Napakagaling, ma'am. Napakagaling. So, you still have questions. So, congratulations from Ma'am Ellen Bison. A very informative and useful topic. And of course, from Ma'am Rochelle Mang Mangarin. Thank you po, Ma'am Irene. So, I guess, Ma'am Irene, you have, uh, they have really fully understood and uh, appreciated your presentation very well. Uh, we still have a, lot, a minute to wait for questions. Baka po may mga katanungan pa po kayo. So Sir members, Mark? Yes po. Yes po, Sir Fern. Wala pa tayong questions from uh, YouTube, pero I would like to commend our participants who are watching our YouTube live. They are very participative during the um, discussion. So, hello yes, to sir. our participants coming from different places in our country like Nueva Vizcaya, Cebu Province, Pasig City, we have uh, Pangasinan, and they're also um, extending uh, congratulatory, congratulatory messages. We have you from Artist Vargas saying, thank you so much for the reminders, Ma'am Irene, from Ma'am Ma Espirito saying, thank you for sharing insights, and virtual club coming from Mr. Esa Sigid, and a thank you from Ms. Unsai. Thank you so much participants um, in our YouTube channel. They are very, very participative. Mark, may thank I say you, something? You, yes, ma'am. Irene, go ahead. Thank you very much <laughs> for all the heartfelt congratulations and uh, all the kind words. Thank you very much, dear participants. I would like 
to uh, give a special credit, special mention to my dear friend and colleague, Mr. Joel Hawon. He actually uh, prepared the presentation. I was just a channel to re-echo his ideas to everyone. Mr. Joel Howard is one of our brilliant teachers in Saver School of San Juan. And uh, I owe him a lot, a lot actually. Okay, these ideas were actually from Mr. Joel Howard. And as I've mentioned, I just re-echoed these ideas in the best way I can. Thank you so much. Uh, and of course, we would like to actually thank you for that, now for having that. And, and as we see on our chat box in this uh, link, we have already the evaluation link in relation to, of course, the, the wonderful presentation of Mom Irene. So you can actually see the link presented or sent to us by Sir Fern in our chat box. So you may now start uh, doing the evaluation to our speaker and to the whole team. Thank you, Po. So it will be closed at the end, uh, at until 8 p.m. though, po, according to Sir Fern, right, Sir Fern? Sorry. Yes, sir, Mark. So, so again, according to Sir, uh, it is the evaluation link will be uh, closed at 8 p.m. So, again, last call for questions. So if you have uh, queries regarding the report of ma'am, ma Irene, could we... Could we let them access the presentation if for them to recall or yes, sure. I can yes, I can provide you a copy of the presentation. When we send your certificates, should you wish to have a copy of the presentation, we'll ask the permission from Mr. Howard and you will get it. Okay, and got it, ma'am. Sir Mark, um they can actually recall presentation through our YouTube channel. It will be uploaded after the live. And a lot yes, more sir. messages coming from our participants <laughs> sa ating YouTube channel saying from um, Edith Pugoy, congratulations, Mama Irene Ikoy. Thank you so much for this very informative discussion from San Mateo National High School. I think it's from Isabella. Then we have also Mom Janela Gatche. Thank you so much. Mom Rites Vargas. Thank you. Mom Lucelle Gabilion. Thank you so much for the webinar. Yes, of course. You're very welcome. Also from Mom Jane Victorino. Thank you so much. Cyron Pasqual. Thank you so much. And also our participants coming from Cavite. There. Yes, we are across the, the archipelago. Napakadlay ng nararating natin, mga kaibigan. Thank you po for, for the words of encouragement. Diba, Sir Fern? Kaya... Keep on sending your, your messages po kahit na hindi pa tayo online dito. You could send actually or your DM, Ma'am Irene, for your concerns or kasi nyo mahingi ng mga, ng mga related na mga questions about her topic, pwede nyo po siyang EDM din. So And again, dumadami, so, sir, dumadami. You're from Ma'am Sharon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Ma'am Jane Gombio with the, her husband watching Hello, with us right now. Uh, Ma'am Jen Lee, Mariano, and United Advocates. It says here, thank you, Apairi. Congratulations and thank you, Mom Irene. Ma from Mayesa Duron, thank you so much. And Paula Palaruan, there. That's thank you, Po. And of course, also, we would like also in return, thank, thank you to our, to our participants also who have uh, graced this event to this session, who have taken their uh, time in listening to our wonderful speaker and to the team. So we, in that, Sir Fern, I guess we could uh, proceed to the next part, sir, right? So, so in, at this juncture, may I, give, uh, may I take this opportunity to do the awarding of Certificate of Recognition, of course, to our very efficient speaker for this sixth session. So as Asia Pacific Association of Educators Training Institute, awards the certificate of recognition to uh, Ma'am Irene M. Ikoy of her, of her sig significant contribution as resource speaker during the free webinar session on school best practices entitled Reframing Student Engagement in the Online Distance Learning, Validate, Challenge, and Explore, organized by APAID, given this 25th day of September 2021 via Zoom meeting signed by a course doc Arnel Egan Zola, our director of APAETI, APA 
Dr. Adrian Lawrence P. Carvajal, the director of APA ET, and of course, Dr. Raquel D. Bernabe, the CEO and president of APA ET. Let's give Ma'am Irene Ikoy a round of applause virtually. Thank you so much, Ma'am. Congratulations, Ma'am. Ma'am Irene. Okay. So uh, as part of our program, so we will con be concluding this uh, program with, of course, a closing remarks coming from, from our one and only director prof of uh, professional development of, I of APA ET, EFL program head. And of course, uh, from, uh, actually, he is now at uh, Lambton College, China. He is none other than a very supportive and encouraging Dr. Arnel E. Genzola. Let's give him a virtual round of applause. So once again, we have Dr. Arnel. So while we are waiting for the for Dr. Arnel, I guess so. We would like to uh, again as, uh, ask your evaluation to our speaker a while ago, so that we will identify and de determine the things that the things that we need to improve, and of course, to gain a lot of appreciative words from you guys. Uh, is Doc, Doc Arnel here already? Our very supportive Doc Arnel. Okay, so I got a message from Doc Arnell. So according to Doc Arnell, uh, actually, Ma'am Irene, from him, you're, you've inspired all of our participants, according to Doc Arnell, and all the participants to join the, and of course, to the ones who attended the Zoom today, to the Facebook, to YouTube, congratulations. So he will be here later, but we will just uh, continue our our program with the closing prayer. So, let us all feel the presence of our Almighty Father. Thank you, Lord, for a uh, successful webinar session. We know that you have blessed us with, with knowledge, understanding, and humility. We thank our administrators, our committee, our members who have opened their hearts in honing our love to this profession. May you keep blessing, may you keep blessing us as we go out of this venue and apply what we have learned in our own division. Grant that we do this fully aware that it is not for ourselves that we learn, but for the service of other people. Shower us your divine guidance so that we would decide wisely and properly. Make us realize that without you, we are nothing. All these we pray and offer to you. Amen. Okay. So I'll just wait, read the message from Doc Kel. So I'll transfer hosting to you shortly and please end the live stream after closing prayer. Okay. So that concludes our very meaningful, worthwhile, and a very substantial session. Again, we would like to give thanks to our participants across the archipelago, of course, with the team. Of course, we have uh, Sir Fern. Thank you so much. And of course, Sir, Sir uh, we have Ma'am Irene Ikoy. And of course, this ends our session, our sixth session for this, uh, for this uh, free webinar. And we do hope that you could still visit our, and subscribe, baka hindi pa nakapag-subscribe, subscribe to our APA ET, youth, official APA ET YouTube channel. And we could go back to our, videos so that you could uh, uh, browse again what Ma'am Ayun have, have, has discussed to us a while ago. Again, this has been your moderator and team number six saying God bless us all, stay safe, and please uh, be updated on our upcoming seminars for the, for the upcoming weeks. Again, God bless us all, thank you, and see you again on the next seminar. Congratulations for...